Hello, good evening, and welcome to Laser Chat, the talk show from the future. I'm Eric Fell, the host of Laser Chat with Eric Fell, the talk show from the future. Welcome to the future. I'm Eric Fell. Laser Chat. I'm caught in a loop. I apologize. I'm good now. I'm glad we can all make it past that. Uh, Chuckles LeClune, you are a spaceship superstar, and you do have a solar-powered laser chat guitar. That is a deep dive into Prism, the band Prism. Uh, I actually have a friend who was almost part of a revival of the band Prism. Hello, Nigel says you are. Uh, hello, everyone who's coming in to see Laser Chat with our special guests tonight. It's going to be very exciting, uh, very happy. Um, I've, I've had an interesting week. Um, I may go into it during the show. Um, I will tell you that I was at a grocery store and um, this lady rammed me with a shopping cart. Um, I was just looking at various salsas and a lady came uh, like the wrong direction. You know, there's like the arrows and she just rammed into me and then she said, I didn't see you. I said, oh, okay, well, um, and I felt really awkward so I kind of pissed off. I left. I mean, I, I, I left. And then, um, I, about 30 seconds later, I, I came back and uh, she was uh, gone. And the only thing that was left was a smashed salsa jar on the ground. So I think she might have turned into a jar of salsa and, uh, and shattered. So do not cross Eric Fell or he shall turn you into a jar of salsa. Um, we are in the future. Bees love vanilla too. Um, what we're going to do is we are going to... Uh, no, we're just going to bring on our, our guests. I'm really excited about our guests. They're, well, they're really great. So our, our first guest, I, I will tell you right now, is uh, an award-winning comic writer, improviser, and of course, known uh, to many of you as Benoit the Anointed from both the Critical Hit Show and the Critical Hit Show Side Venture. Uh, but I know why you're all here. You're all here because he played Bert in an episode of 21 Jump Street. It's Ian Boothby. Hi, Ian. Hey, it's me. Hi. How's, How's it going? How's it going? Very good. Uh, I had a little scary thing happen to me just uh, before I came here. I was at a little um, corner uh, bodega, and uh, an old woman uh, knocked into me, and uh, I turned around, and she was gone, and on the floor yeah. uh, was just a smashed uh, thing of salsa. Oh, my God. And I'm thinking this is, I've heard reports, this might be uh, that famous uh, witch, uh, Baba Salsa. Right, Are you yes. familiar with her? Yeah. So uh, uh, we're, we're cursed now, uh, unfortunately, both of us. Yeah. Hey, but we are, we are blessed, however, because uh, in the chat, uh, there's someone with the username uh, Bees Love Vanilla 2 who's just said that they are Jenny Apps from Toronto. Oh, oh, oh yeah. uh, an incredibly funny uh, comedian and yeah. an excellent person. Hey, hey, Jenny, hello. It's been uh, it's, so nice to, uh, I'm not seeing you, but it's, I'm, you're there. I can't even read what you're saying, but it, I appreciate you being here and I appreciate you. Yeah. No, she's uh, one of the funniest uh, comedians oh, yeah. uh, around. Yeah. And we used to all do trivia at the Anza Club. Yeah, that got hot and heavy, eh? That got uh, people, people took that real serious. Oh, people took that really serious. I remember there was yeah, like... Trivia, trivia is not trivial to, uh, to uh, a lot of uh, pub quizzers for sure. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, I, I, that that's where I started hosting trivia, and I have had people. I had, I had a guy ask me to step outside one time, um, like to fight to make out. I I probably would have said yes, uh, because okay. because you know the the alternative was him probably punching me. So <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. I remember there was a bunch of people that burst in at one point and wanted to fight another guy. We had to talk them down. That was that was fun. Oh, but yeah. I, just on the on the trivial side of things, I remember from like and it must be now, it must be I don't know, 10 to 15 years ago, but there was one trivia question and it was uh Dylan Reimer was the host. Mm -hmm. And the uh, and the answer what we we answered bowling. <gasps> and the answer was Ten, five, oh, five pin, pin bowling. bowling. Yes. Five pin bowling. Yes. And uh and uh, and he didn't give us a point for that. And uh, I've resented it to this day. I remember that. Oh, you too, right? Yeah, yeah. You remember that? Yeah. Oh, the outrage. Like, yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah. I... We're in Canada, sir. We mean five pin bowling. Yeah. Of course. We mean five pin bowling. 
Um, but let's uh, let's bring out our uh, second guest, uh, oh, for and sure. we can get to the, all the all the fun uh, ch- ch- chatting because I'm I'm really excited. Uh, our second guest uh, is uh, the creator, star, and writer of Standard Action, uh, star of the Ooh. upcoming film Who Am I Now. Uh, uh, of course, uh, she's also a part of What the Quest and uh, both Edda and Freya in Critical Hit Show and Side Venture. But we're all here because of her iconic portrayal of Dr. Emilia Avery in Untold Stories of the ER. It's Joanna Gaskell. Yay! <laughs> I should put. I should get that applause sound Thank effect you. in Critical Hit. <laughs> Dr. Emilia Avery. Avery in Untold Stories of the ER. Yeah. Did you do a, Did you do more than one episode of Untold Stories? Because I did a bunch. I did. I did two. One of them, I was a gynecologist, and the other one, I believe, Amelia Avery was a. Um, I think she was a vascular surgeon. Okay. Yeah. Why are these stories untold? I'm sorry. I, I am aware that people have done this, but why? Why are these stories hush hush up until this point? Well, I, I don't know they're just too much they're too much for the audience to handle and so we can't tell them unless it's under a secured controlled tv environment i don't know well, so screw doctor patient confidentiality <laughs> yeah. that's like someone's just someone just blew that completely out yeah. so you're yeah. a vascular surgeon what what's going on that's like listen we can't we cannot talk about this but if they ever want to make a tv series about it yeah. okay just, that's cool yeah, <laughs> just bring out the money and and we'll, yeah. we'll tell your untold story in 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 small chunks separated by intense music and, uh, and oh, yeah. montage. Yeah. yeah, so if I remember correctly, so the premise was um, they would actually like have the real doctors tell the writers a, a, a just wild thing that happened in the ER and yeah. they, they would dramatize it, but they would fly in. A lot of the time they would fly in the doctor and the doctor would play themselves. Yeah, the scene that I had, one of the scenes that I had as the vascular surgeon was with a doctor who had worked with the real vascular surgeon. And it was like a really big, intense scene. So this guy who wasn't an actor had to sort of do this whole scene with me. He did a really good job. I, but he but knew all the vascular talk. He, he did. He knew did he all ever free, freewheel it and do a little improv and you had to like up your vascular game? Well, you know, I wouldn't be able to tell either way. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> When, when, uh, like that, that was a very popular thing for actors to do here for a while. When, when I was starting out, it was two things. There were court shows, fake court shows, mm-hmm. and fake uh, relationship counseling shows. Oh my god! So they would hire improvisers and comedians as well as other actors to go and do this, and then they'd have the general plot. But because actors are lazy, they would go off script usually halfway through and just like, but you cheated on me with my mom. And then it was like, what the <laughs> shit? And then it would just go, and, and that would be in the court case as well. They would just make up, well, I saw him do it. And it's just like, well, you can't just throw in evidence. I guess you can. Yeah. Just make it up stuff. Yeah. 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 If it's entertaining. Yeah. I mean, yeah. that sounds fun. Yeah. That sounds really yeah. fun. Yeah. It does sound it. pretty fun to do. I never did it, but it did oh, sound. Uh, I probably would have. But, the, but what I liked about it, especially the court shows, were um, one of the, one of the guys who was like uh, yeah, the guy at the door who was like, "Well, the court case is going to be this," and he's an actual lawyer, but he's also a comedian. And his name was Andrew Cochran, uh, and he was also a theater sports guy. Um, but like afterwards, he'd have to try and justify the legality of what went on, even though it was all <laughs> bullshit. And then the judge was just going nuts and going off and like ruling on things wrongly and he's like well uh ignoring all laws that i know of the judge went in favor of the dog oh my god i I probably would have confessed to being a dracula (laughs) like i would have been like rebecca there's something i need to tell you i'm also a dracula uh cut to commercial cut to commercial yeah (laughs) coming back (laughs) as an undead man i don't know if the laws apply to you yeah (laughs) you (laughs) Um, I did a few untold stories of the yard. ER. Yeah, I, I, you were in untold stories of the yard ER as well. Yes. I was in, I think, one episode per season. Um, oh, the, the showrunner was like, um, he's just like, just bring in Eric Fell for this. I would just get a call from from my agent, and go, yeah, they want you in for another one. I'm like, okay. Wasn't there like fourteen seasons? Yeah, were I, you... I don't think I did. I think it was just like for the first like six. Oh, like I did. Okay. And I want to know your specifics, but. Was there all now? I know there. I know that there is this as well, and I have not seen it, but I know there is. But there's also sexy, sexy stories of the ER. 
that seemed to be a similar thing that also shot in town. Yeah, I... Was this the same show, but like this show after dark? It's something like there were there were dirty ones in it. Like I auditioned, my initial audition was for a guy who stuck his dank in a Coleman stove while camping and got it stuck. That's good product placement for Coleman. I'll yeah. give you that. Um, yeah. But I wound up my Black fl- and Decker wanted it so much, <laughs> but they just couldn't just, make yeah. uh, match the uh, offer. Uh, um, what, are, what, what was the audition like? Was it just a lot of grimacing? Like a lot of... Yeah. I give you a Coleman stove. <laughs> <laughs> you had to bring in your own Coleman stove. <laughs> yeah, for hygiene reasons. Yeah. Yeah. Hygiene yeah. reasons I did. I, did yeah. I do remember saying that like... It was like something about like, yeah, so I just got really high and started sticking it in things. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Why not? Yeah. Um, so what I did want you to go back and see you got that role. Yeah, what did you play in your many times? What I played, uh, one of them I played uh, a nurse who had to um, ice down a guy uh, who had taken uh, a bunch of Viagra and his uh, erection wouldn't go away and his yeah. his girlfriend comes in with him but his wife is his emergency contact so that's where things get wacky <laughs> um and meanwhile i have to like ice down his his area and uh it was they, they gave the actor um, an actual like strap on uh and it was blue and the watchman movie had just come out so there was a lot of dr manhattan uh, comments um <laughs> Another time I played a guy... And who watches that? <laughs> anyway, go ahead. <laughs> uh, another time I played a guy who uh, got a really bad concussion and I got to th- I got to puke and the puke was made from delicious strawberry yogurt and granola. So it was, it was nice. Uh, and another time I played like a, an American Idol judge. Because <laughs> if some, oh, no. someone was giving birth at American Idol and they had to ship them down to the ER. Um, but my favorite... Okay, wait a second. Sorry, time out on this one. So this is an untold story of the ER? <laughs> yeah, that one... So that, these are not true stories of the ER, then? That one... Well, you know that, that some of them are. Maybe, I guess, some of them aren't. Because it feels like that one would have gotten brought up before. That, that, no. That yeah. might I was have, the president of the yeah. United States, and... That might have been an episode of Tales from the Crib, but it was the same producers. Uh, <laughs> that was a real Tales show. from the Crib. Real show, real show. Um, oh. But there was one where I played a guy who got stabbed... And they gave me like a fake part of my chest with the wound and everything. And I had to be intubated. Um, so I had like a tube, but only like going so far. And the, uh, um, I was like strapped down and they had to move me from like a gurney onto a bed. And of course, this is not medical professionals doing this. This is very talented actors. And they had to... They all have been trained exactly for this moment. Yeah. And they're probably all a lot smaller than you. Yeah, this was, bef- you this, was six foot five. this was before the weight <laughs> loss, so I was two thirty something, and uh, yeah, so I was like strapped in and intubated. So I had this thing on my face, and I went over, and I started tipping, and like the the actual like there were people just off off the camera. They're like, Ugh! and they caught me before I landed face first with this thing. Oh god. Yeah, that was uh, that was pretty harrowing. But um, so, so 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 sorry to interrupt. This this means that because of course they're sloppy. There were some injuries on set. Do those injuries then become new untold tales of medical things? Because untold you know, stories of untold stories of the ER. Yeah, yeah. Like because you know you must sign a, a, some waiver. And it's like. If something hilarious and violent happens to you, that's ours. We're like, making an episode about it. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Especially I'm, if it's I'm, sexy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we signed I that. We signed that for Critical were, Head. Sorry. There were probably. Um, I also feel like there were there were probably like supernatural things that happened on that set because it was all shot mm. in Riverview. Right. So. Mm. Yeah. yeah. And they didn't have the areas that you weren't allowed to go down, like roped off in any way. So they leave us in the green room area, which was basically just like, I don't know, a room in the old hospital. And you'd sort of look one way down the hallway and there was set with all the people. And then you look the other way down the hallway and it was just like just like extending into shadowy green darkness in that like minty dentist color. Yeah. And there were definitely ghosts down there, like just definitely. Oh yeah. Don't you th- do you think that the because again, uh, uh, my sister in law worked as a PA, and there was one time I think she was there, and they were shooting three things at the same time, three different sets. So you had to, like people were coming in the wrong set, and it's like no, you're in Supernatural, and this is uh, mm-hmm. supposed to be the Flash, and this is the 
Uh, and I just wonder, like, if the ghosts at a certain point just go, fuck, ah, fuck. <laughs> it's too much, right? Like, if it's one family that you're haunting, you can really make it a project and try to get them out. But if just like, uh, they just aren't, they're here for the weekend. They're going to shoot a couple. Yeah. Yeah. What am I going to scare everybody? What am I going to scare? What What am I going to do? Yeah. yeah, you just, just walk through set and just push something over every once in a while. It's really all you're going to achieve. Yeah. What, well, the X-Files is back? They renewed that? How'd that work? <laughs> ah, Whatever. Yeah, just like, oh, yeah. okay. Hey, I decided to be a ghost, you know, for, for the hours, you know, for the for the easy hours and the light workload. Yeah. But now there's everybody here. I mean, yeah. Yeah. Well, you can't do quality work. Yeah. Like, you can't be proud of your job when you've got all of these people around and you can't really focus on what frightens yeah. them. Yeah. I am an artist with my door slamming. I can't just slam all the doors. Yeah. yeah. And there must be, like, infinite try and find a ghost shows as well that are shooting too and they must piss them off as well yeah there's, there's all those people with their little cameras going up and they're like ghosty hunters and whatnot is there is there like a supernatural er show as well because it feels like there is like supernatural tales of the er that does sound like a real thing and if not guys here there's, there's we the got show. a show we got a show yeah, yeah. Whenever um, I'm trying to think of a show to pitch, usually I do go for hospital because it's all, there's already one being made and they got all the stuff. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, yeah. make make up a show. It's a hospital, but it blankety blank. blank yeah, blank. just call it Ghost Hospital. Pick a story, put it in a hospital. Add yeah, ghost, yeah, yeah, Ghost Hospital isn't bad. Ghost Hospital, sure. Yeah. Write that hmm. down, Eric. Oh, I am. Okay. Uh, right, right next to Chuckles Laclune, uh in the chat mentioned that the ghosts just want the IMD boo credits. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Ghost Hospital. There it is. There's a. That's that's gonna be like a, a supernatural soap opera. I think. I think it's gonna be some... that really. That was a, a dumb thing that bugged me in the in the Ghostbusters uh, redo that was done recently, uh, where. Uh, they were all talking about how, you know, because they slipped in the original Ghostbusters as cameos, mm -hmm. but they had a weird thing, like, early on where they, they were watching one of those ghost shows where, like, some amateurs go and try to uh, capture ghosts and bust mm -hmm. ghosts, and it was a TV show, and then you never see anything about that TV show. Yeah. They never cut to it. They never do anything about it, and it's like, that should have been the cameos from the Ghostbusters. They should all have been on that TV show doing their stuff, but they're all a bunch of frauds. Yeah, and then you know you cut to that, and then uh, you know you can meet them in person if you want. It was just such a weird thing to like throw on, in yeah. and then do nothing with. Yeah, we can always pretend that that's like um, the truth. Was it the Truth Seekers? <laughs> that show. What's the Truth Seekers? Truth Seekers. Is it called Truth Seekers? Um, the Amazon Prime show with Nick Frost. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, yeah. I haven't seen all of it, but yes, yes. It's yeah. I mean, that's the idea. Is he's a cable cable technician who's also a a ghost hunter. Um, yeah. Very good show. I really enjoyed it. Really enjoyed it. Um, I always like in the ghost shows where they go like, you can record the ghost with a specific camera. And I'm like, and no one else has thought of this? Yeah. No one has thought <laughs> to do this? To like, so, put cameras up everywhere with this yeah. filter? Yeah. You know, so it's uh, heat sensitive. Oh, so we'd have known about ghosts by now then because someone would have covered this. Someone would have done this. But you figured that, no, you figured it out. Okay, that's fine. Yeah, I'll that's think fine. It. Yeah. Slight, slight plot hole. Well, the show's still enjoyable, so. Yeah. yeah. What was that sound? What was that sound? <laughs> what was that sound? It's tons, of, tons of that business. Yeah. Um. Anybody? Anybody else? Uh, oh, that is a double R diner mug. That is great. It is. You know, I went there and uh, got it. Yeah, yes. it was uh, great. It was. It was nice because you're walking around the area and you'll spot like something from a specific scene, mm -hmm. and you won't realize that like, oh, I really memorized. That whole pilot. Holy cow. Oh, there's the big log. Oh, there's this. Oh, yeah. there's the train. Oh, shit. Yeah. Yeah, I went down and visited the Twin Peaks shooting locations, yeah, in like 96 when I was in film school in the middle of a big David Lynch kick in my life. I mean, 20 years old, film student. I'm gonna... Right. I'm, but you had to go through that. Yeah. Yeah. And I think, I think Lost Highway either had just come out or was just about to come out, so there was like a new David Lynch movie. Yeah. Um, and it had that awesome soundtrack with David Bowie and Trent Reznor. So good. Ghost Hospital. Well, there's a Twin Peaks uh, restaurant here, isn't there? There's like a... Like yeah, a the Black Lodge. And yeah. there's, there's two locations, like two, two blocks from yeah. each other, yeah. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Oh, that's creepy. Yeah. Hmm. yeah. It's great that they didn't make it like the good lodge and then the, and the bad lodge. Yeah. They made them both the bad lodge. I don't know. We're not, we're not successful restaurateurs, so... Is there, yeah, yeah, what's the, the purpose? 
that doesn't exist anymore. There's no such thing currently as a successful as restaurant. A successful, yeah. This if you're true. still surviving in the pandemic, you're, you're amazing. You're doing great. Yeah. yeah. You've got excellent takeout. Well done you. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Um, I'm uh, in Burnaby. Uh, so I, I, but I get some of the uh, East Van restaurants on the, uh, the delivery stuff, which is nice. So I will get um, occasionally uh, Red Wagon pops up on uh, my Uber Eats. Oh, I like Red Wagon. Good, good breakfast. Oh, yeah. I like them too. Try ordering from them. They don't deliver. It's like always, ever, never, 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 never delivering. They yeah. used they used to go through. I think it was Uber Eats. Um, they do. But it's just it's always like unavailable. Not okay, there. No. so okay, so it's because not they thing. moved, they moved and they're doing other stuff now. Yeah, uh, they okay. moved down the street. Uh, yeah, they moved like three blocks. They're fine, but you're right. Excellent breakfast. Yeah, and uh, just a just a great place. Yeah. Also, can you pick up though, so can you order from Uber Eats and then pick up? Yes. Okay. Okay. Yeah. All right. So, um, which to me is also a little strange because you yeah. could just do that calling the restaurant directly. Yeah. Yes. And cut it all out, but yeah, they 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 kind of have a thing on their side about like why not save some money and go and pick it up yourself. Oh, what are you then? Yeah. Are you, are you, are you, you know, is this Tinder for food? <laughs> are you just connecting me with things? Like, what is it? Yeah. I would swipe right on an Eggs Benedict. I tell you. Oh, that. man, they do a nice Eggs That's Benedict. Cool. You're not running trucker breakfast? Oh, my God. Oh, yeah. Oh, why don't we all go for breakfast? Oh, oh just go. Let's just order for breakfast now. Have them deliver to our... Yeah. Our places. Ah, because we're in the future. Fuck, we're in the future. We're in the future. In the future. Oh, I'm sorry. We're in the future. Oh, no, you can yeah. swear, I think. Can you swear on this or no? Well, there's, okay. okay. When I set up the stream, it says, it says, is it 18 plus? And then it says, like, oh, I, I'm not a powerful enough streamer to say that it's 18 plus. So right. if I can't say it's. Yeah, just like. We're not a modern Batman cartoon. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey, Batman, take it down a notch. Oh, I, it's enough that everything that you does has to has the swears, Batman. Enough, yeah. enough of that. I really, I really did like. I think it was like a week after um, Disney. You know, when they when they launched, they're like they announced they're like one hundred different projects. You yeah. know, they're like we're doing this, we're doing this, we're doing this, we're doing this. And then I swear to God, there was an article, and it's like Zack Snyder says Batman's gonna say fuck. <laughs> <laughs> well. <laughs> Hasn't he been in a whole bunch of R-rated movies already? I don't know. I mean, he showed killing, it. Killing Joke was. Yep. Joker was. Yep. He's not technically in Birds of Prey, but Birds of Prey was, yep. right? I think what so. about all the Christopher Nolan movies? Weren't they R-rated? No, 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 those were those were PG. The one, there's a cartoon that's out now that's like kind of a Enter the Dragon, but with Batman, and that's also oh. R-rated for yeah. no sensible reason. It should not be high... Law and Order SVU shouldn't be, you know, PG and then Batman is like a uh, hard R. Yeah. Right. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And by yeah. the way, Law, I watched, tried to watch Law and Order last night, the, the new, because they're, they're going, we're top, we're topical now. So they're all going, what a year that was. And they're wearing masks, but no one knows how to wear masks properly. Well, so, just... the, yeah, they're always taking them off when they get close. Like, get real close to the suspect. Like, well, I'll tell you something. Yeah. Like, well, that was the last time you should be doing this. I got, because uh, I was wearing a mask, I got ID'd uh, at the liquor oh, store. What? I felt great. <laughs> the guy's like, oh, I'm really sorry nice. I have to do this. I'm like, no, no, it's been a while. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. yeah. And then what they do was in the States. Which, oh, sorry, go ahead. Was he embarrassed when he saw the, uh, the date? Because I've had that. I've had people be like, yeah, no, I need to ask for ID, and then they just like sheepishly hand it back to me when they see how old I actually am. Um, actually, Joanna, we do have a question. Uh, what is the latest on the release for Who Am I Now? Mm. Your your oh, movie. Yeah, that's an excellent question. Um, the and the the short and long answer of that is I don't know. Um, the trailer was released on like right at the end of the year, I think New Year's Eve or something like that, which you can see at whoamino.ca. But great trailer. The, yeah, thank you. It is a great trailer. Um, the film itself, though, is on its way to film festivals. And oh, nice. The thing about that is that nobody knows how long that's going to take. So, depending on which ones it gets into, um, if it gets into any of them, I'm sure it will. If it gets into like a bunch of them, it's going to be unfortunately out of the public eye for up to a year um hopefully we can have more and updated news on that soon 
Um, I know that that my producer, Louise uh, Lathy, will let us all know as soon as she knows anything, but I don't know. Thanks for asking, though. That, yeah, that was um, Chuck Chuckles Lacloon. Thank you, Chuckles. And if it's not a spoiler, uh, who are you anyway? Who, who am I anyway? <laughs> <laughs> it's all about finding out who you are. Every scene ends with a, a twirling question mark. <laughs> yeah. Just like me pointing blindfolded at a at a wheel. Yes. Who am I for the people, next scene? <laughs> people going, who is that? No, I'm not really sure. Here's a fun th here's a fun thing with ID. You were talking about ID that they do in the states now. It's like when they sh when uh, people show ID, if it's got a 19, uh, you're good. Yes. Yeah. It's all crossed a over. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. Everyone who was born uh, before 2000, uh, have a drink. Mm -hmm. Yep. That's weird. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I've been, like, I've been, Y two K babies. Yeah, I've been looking at time recently, and I have not been a fan. Um, <laughs> been looking at time. I've been, I've been just looking at time. <laughs> just looking at it, taking a look. Yeah, like I remember when I was a little kid, and it's like, oh, it's the 40th anniversary of World War Two, and I'm like, oh, oh my god, like there's been more time since I saw that 40th anniversary. <laughs> yeah. Also, what do you buy it? It's like, oh, it's good. It's got its 40th anniversary. I should get it something. Yeah, I mean, it's... I don't know. Let's see, like, 50 is gold. Uh, 25 is silver. No, no, there's some bad stuff with gold. Let's, oh, God! Uh, <laughs> yeah, no, that's uh, uh, um, How about a nice kiss on the street? Just randomly. <laughs> just a random... No, wait, ow, no, that's not ow, appropriate anymore. Yeah. Yeah. How about we get rid of Nazis? That's a good. That's a good thing to do. That would be a good anniversary present. Yeah. Yeah. yeah maybe they. Maybe we're doing that now. Maybe. Let's. Yeah. Let's hope. Let's well, make, that's. Let's make Nazis yeah. so lame now that you're just like, ugh. I don't want to be that guy. Yeah. Those. Uh, that's. Ugh. Guys. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Oh, someone just mentioned that is the fortieth platinum. That would mm. be weird. I always thought platinum would be like higher. Yeah. I'm, I'm thinking. Rec I'm thinking record sales. But I think yeah, it's I, is it? No. Yeah, I. Yeah, it should be more than gold. Is gold is fifty? Yeah. yeah. So it feels like platinum should be seventy-five or something. But you're probably right. I apologize. Then what's diamond? Uh, uh, oh. Girl's best friend. There's diamond. Yeah, diamond yeah. anniversary, right? Like, didn't um, is there, wasn't there like diamonds a... are forever? I know that. Yes, that was the. Uh... Oh man, diamonds are forever. That was a movie. Um... <laughs> That was the one where um, Connery had quit and then they got George Lazenby and then he quit and then they just like, what do we, uh, and they just like dropped a truckload of cash off at Connery's house and said, please come back. And ah. uh, he did. And it was, um, it really isn't that far off from um, Austin Powers. Like Austin, if you watch Austin Powers, it's really not that heightened from James Bond. Well, what was the uh, terrible female character name in Diamonds Are Forever? I haven't seen it. Uh, there was Tiffany Case. And wow, you you got them memorized. Tiffany or Case. Are you, was, are you looking this up? No, no. Tiffany Case was played okay. by Jill St. John. Um, wow. Okay. Good yeah. call. Good. Okay. Wow. But okay. Uh, the one that uh, is the um, the big one is um, Plenty. Plenty O'Toole. And Connery says, and Connery says, uh, yeah. It's named after your father, no doubt. Um, oh. and, and, then uh, she and then she says to him, yeah, that's how names work. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and she was, uh, she was played by Lana Wood, uh, Natalie Wood's sister. Wait, her name was Lana Wood? No, Nat That's enough! Yeah. <laughs> that's enough! <laughs> stick with Why'd you action. change your name? <laughs> You're already there. You're halfway there. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> uh. Yeah. Lindsay O'Toole. That's yeah, terrible. I got so it. What's your name? Ivana Man. Okay, we're gonna change your name to. No, just leave it. Yeah, just keep it, <laughs> keep it there. But I have a weird. Um, I got a lot of James Bond stuff up in here. Um, I have all these wonderful memories of watching uh, the the Bond movies with my dad um, on this like the CBS Sunday Night Movie when I was really little, and I brought that up to him again, and he said. Uh, I said, yeah, Dad, I really loved watching these movies. You know, when I was like like six years old, just really like, you know, it felt really close to my dad, you know? And my dad said, oh, I uh, I don't remember any of those movies. I think I fell asleep through all of them. I said, oh, God. <laughs> the 
is like perfect memory. <laughs> My dad's just like, actually, I slept through it. Sorry, kid. <laughs> the cat's in the cradle in the silver spoon. Yeah. Uh, when you wake up, daddy don't know when. <laughs> No, that's that's still a nice memory as long as you're there. Oh, it is. I had a great you're time. You're a nice, warm dad. Yeah. 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 So it was just yeah. Um, all the bomb James movies. Bond. Sorry, go ahead. What, what, was, what was that? that? Is, is oh, that but I, I, th- yeah, that's Ghost Rider is next to me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I was gonna say uh, I w- I wanted to watch some of the Bond movies again, and they're pretty expensive on like to rent digitally. Like some of them are like eight bucks. Uh, yeah. But I found out they're all on. HBO, so I just like oh, I just pay the ten bucks and uh, so I did. I just recently watched Diamonds Are Forever, which is why I remember all this. Okay, so it's like it's like my Pink Panther problem, where I'm just like I remember liking the Pink Panther. Then you watch Pink Panther and go like, well, not that one, and that wasn't the one either. Oh no, this is just stupid. Yeah, was oh, this a good one? And it's like it's, I'm the same way with James Bond. Like I like I remember. Oh, I remember. Yeah, when's good? When's good again? So. What would you say, like, if you're just going to show someone one James Bond movie? Uh, besides, besides, I would say uh, the Daniel Craig one works generally for most people. Yeah. But what other What other one would you work from, oh, like, classic Bond? God, I mean... I like old ones. Yeah, I mean, but, like, what? Like, because they're very slow. Like, watching them play Baccarat for forever they're isn't necessary. They're all very long movies. And I would... It's uh, for an action movie. Why are they all so long? They're all very Every long. Every one of them has an extra hour in it, like, in the middle that you're just... Come on. Like, yeah. it, there's no James Bond movie that does not go on at least, like, 45 minutes too long. Yeah. Huh. And, at least. And usually an hour. Yeah, because there's always got to be the scene where Bond plays... Uh, well, uh, Ian, of course you know this. Um, we did a James Bond We thing, did a James right. Bond show. And I was, there's always a scene where James Bond plays some sort of game with the villain. So you gotta put and that in. And wins yeah. strictly because of dumbass luck. Yeah. And we're fine with that in in our movie. Yeah. And Just dumb, dumb, dumb luck. And, so and he then, never approached the idea he could be a supernatural creature. No, or a magician. Or, yes, an illusion. Or, like, you know, or, or like, you set him up ahead of time with a cue, and he's just like, you'll be able to see the cards, Bond, and this card turns into any other card, Bond. It's just like, ah, uh, better all. Eh, blackjack. Why? <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Luck. Luck. I've got four aces. Why? Eh. It's uh, yeah. Yeah. Cool. yeah. That's, that's, not, cool. that's, that's yeah. not really The skill. only thing you can assume is that he goes on so many missions that he, and I'm going to swear, fucks up. That you don't see those ones, and they only show you the ones where dumb luck McGillicuddy uh, actually like uh, you're only seeing the winning hands. It's the guy who only who shoots the basket, and you only see the one shot where it went in. The rest of them, he's like bouncing off his head and like killing a cat. It's like untold stories of the ER. You know, they just don't show you the really, really boring everyday stuff. They have yeah. to show you the one with the guy with his dick in a Coleman stove. Yeah. <laughs> Which That's, I think was a James Bond, right? That yeah, was, the, the man, the man with the dick, the man with the Coleman stove. That was a, that was the Lazenby one. That's yeah, right. yeah. Um, that what was, I, yeah. What I do think was funny was like Con, so Connery finally meets Blofeld in in You Only Live Twice, and he's played by Donald Pleasance, and they're talking good. That's face a to good face. Blofeld. Yeah. Okay. And then uh, the next movie, Lazenby meets Blofeld, and Blofeld doesn't recognize him, even though they just met. Uh, Played and by a different guy. Telly Savalas. What? Really? Like yeah. Kojak. And then in Diamonds Are... Skiing in front of a green screen. Yep. A lot of green screen. Less and... convincing green screen than this nonsense I've <laughs> I'm really here. This is not any screen oh, no, at all. I know you're on the surface of uh, the future yeah. moon. Yeah. So I'm, just, I'm um, in a gray book. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then... You're in an Orwellian nightmare. <laughs> yes. Help me. <laughs> and then the third time he meets... Blofeld. Blofeld's played by the like the professor from Rocky Horror. Yeah. Wow. And, and the final time he meets Blofeld is oh, the weirdest thing because, because it like it's it's a it's a movie and it starts with like James Bond at like a grave. I'm not gonna say whose grave, but it's a personal yeah, connection. Yeah. Nobody spoil that. <laughs> right. And and uh, it's basically someone who died 15 years ago. Yeah. Something like two, that. Two and, two and previous he's, he's Bonds. At the grave. Yeah, Before. and he looks he looks down and he's just like, oh, 
and he for, and like he forgot to kill this guy, and so he like go, just goes and kills the guy. Like gets a helicopter, the guy's in a wheelchair, scoops the guy up yep. with his helicopter. Just, just drops uh, there's him. a cat on his lap. Yeah, he jumped. The cat goes, oh, screw this. Well, that's good. Yeah. Yeah, it takes off. Um, and then uh, as he's about to kill him, he says something like, "Because there's an inside joke that is funny to no one." Oh, I will buy like, you a stainless steel delicatessen. Exactly. Hilarious. What a line to end on. Glorious. And then drops him into like a factory shoot, yeah. like a one of those smokestacks. Yeah. And yeah. they don't, they don't even call him Blofeld in that because they didn't have the rights to use Blofeld or Spectre by no. that point. There's this whole mess that ended with a remake of Thunderball in the eighties. And if you're just watching it for the first time, like me, and have not weren't old enough to see this movie in the past, it looks like James Bond was at a funeral, like for someone who died a long time ago. And then decides to murder a guy in a wheelchair for yeah. no reason. No reason. <laughs> a guy who wants to buy him like a stainless steel delicatessen. Nice. What? And then now murdered. And then like the song starts. And it's like, what? what's this? What's this movie? Is that connected to the movie? In no way connected to the movie. At all. Yeah. It's, not, not, yeah. Huh. It's, it's, it's bizarre. And that was that... That was for your eyes only that that happens in. I think. Yeah, that's right. And so like it's like for your eyes only. So yeah. it's like after you drop <laughs> this guy who's in a wheelchair down a down to the and he's like scooped up in a with a helicopter yeah. in a wheelchair and then yeah. drop down a thing. Yeah, yeah. Oh that's my it. god. Well, I well, like... I just murdered a guy. For your eyes only. <laughs> he's the best at murdering the disabled. <laughs> he's just, the it's... best. Oh dear! I feel like it's an origin story for the cat who has become a supervillain to avenge his master. Oh, that would be great if the next movie starts with a cat at uh, the same cemetery, but it's but it's a grave for Blofeld, and then the cat gets himself a little helicopter. Little cat, and goes little, after little cat a helicopter. Helicopter, yes, yes. Oh, that would okay. Now you now you now you're cooking with gas. I'm, yeah, they missed they missed that whole opportunity. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, yeah. I love it. No, that would be uh, that'd be really good. Nah, I don't know. I don't know about James Bond. Um, um, but, I but understand there were... in theory it's it's good. Yeah, that's the thing. In theory, it's good. And and in the moment, like in nineteen eight in nineteen seventy nine, I'm sure Moonraker was amazing. Um, by the way, I do love the movie Moonraker. That's the one. Yeah. That, there was a period of time in the late seventies. In the late seventies, everything legally had to be Star Wars for twenty two minutes. So yeah. James Bond goes into space and shoots lasers. In that oh, one. cool! Okay. Um, is this the one where the pigeon does the double take? That's the one where there's a there's a, a, a gondola chase uh, in Venice, and a pigeon does a double take. Yes. Yeah. Is um, it an actual? Yeah. yeah. We did. We did that one for uh, uh, gentlemen hecklers. Oh, nice one. Okay. And I got to do my Roger Moore impersonation because um, nobody does Roger Moore impersonations. So, no. so I just did the whole thing like this, um, which was a lot of fun. To do. Aside from Daniel Craig, I like him best. But that's me. I'm oh, yeah. the weirdo who likes Roger Moore. Um, well, you're not alone, because uh, I feel the same way. Um, I kind of feel like your jacket is coming out of a James Bond movie, actually, Eric. Mm. It comes out of an East Van thrift store a couple years ago, uh, and I this is part of my reverse Dracula costume. Ah, yes, reverse Where Dracula. Where I do my reverse Dracula bit. Oh, I like reverse Dracula. Yeah. Mm. Uh, sorry, just get back to Moonraker for a second. Yes. Uh, was that the only... Okay, so you mentioned Blofeld. Blofeld was a villain who came back. That was a rare thing yeah. to occur. Uh, aside from Blofeld, was Jaws the only villain to come back? I think so. I think the only... Are you familiar with who I'm talking about when I'm talking about uh, Jaws? The Steel Tooth Guy. Yeah. Steel Tooth Guy, yeah. 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 Yes. I once did was a, like the creepy, horrible murderer in the first one, then falls in love with a lady with braces in the in, in this yes. this one. And oh, and shares credit with you in a film, Ian. Uh, that's yeah, that's uh, he's in Happy Gilmore. He's in right. Happy Gilmore. He's the yeah. he's the the boss with the the, the nail in his head. Um, but when I auditioned, still and Happy Gilmore. No, Sorry? no, uh, not that no. I not that I'm aware of. No, but he did have to be kind of propped up a bit because he couldn't really stand on his own. He was going through health problems, as many people who are kind of giants go through. So yeah, he was pro he was propped and kind of held up and had like devices. So he's always in a crowd behind people. But he was okay. apparently very very sweet. Uh, when I did the audition for that, uh, I auditioned at the same time as Carl Weathers, 
Oh my and, god. Uh, yeah, and the and when Carl Weathers went in, there was a couple of local Vancouver actors who were really being snobby about it. And uh, at the time, I just went like, "He's Action Jackson." Yeah, he's. And they were like, "Oh, who cares?" Like, "Oh well, then you, we don't know each other." Yeah, like and now he's... he's helping Baby Yoda. Oh. So there yeah. you go. Yeah, you who's don't laughing care now? Oh, Weathers. It's Jeez. he's Apollo Creed. He's, he's so much more. He's, he's so, yeah, he is Apollo Creed as well. And he's yes. he's yes. he's Dylan of Dylan, you son of a bitch, fame with the handshake. Yes, yes, with the handshake, the intense, crazy handshake. Yes. Yeah, like that's. Uh, yeah, he's, he's he's Carl Weathers. He's yeah, I yeah, love. He, I genuinely think he's right. He former BC Lion, Carl Weathers. Oh, what? I didn't know that. That's oh. Yep, he was. He was. Uh, yeah, he played for BC Lions for at least one season, like in the in the seventies. Um, didn't he also show up in um, Arrested Development? Didn't he try? Oh yeah, teaching oh, my Tobias. God, yeah. Okay, how to, acting. Yeah, how his how acting. Act, yeah. Oh yeah, like and, he, and he was like collecting chicken bones and like you know oh. you get that and you get some vegetables. You got yourself a soup. You got yourself a <laughs> stew. <laughs> yeah, he, like, <laughs> he was great. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, he directed an episode of Mandalorian too, and it was really good. Yes, yes. It's weird when I meet people who are snobs. Like you just go like, why are you, why are you snobs? Don't yeah. be, don't oh. be snobs. Like yeah. you meet people who are like joyful and like really are just thrilled about this whole experience and what you're doing, and 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 see like someone who's in like old movies. You're like, oh, it's so great to meet you. And people are like mm, that guy. I'm like yeah. okay, yeah. Well, I... you're that guy, and he's that guy, and it's not that. That guy is why he's that guy, but then you say that guy is why you're not that guy. Yeah. So, nah. yeah, yeah, like I'll I, never be that guy. I once I once did a show and Mickey Dolans from the Monkees was in the audience, and mm-hmm. uh, I wouldn't talk to him after. It was great. It was it's one of the Monkees, right? Like it's super cool. Uh, he was my yeah. game show partner on Acting Crazy. Oh, nice. And yeah. uh, one I, of the I, uh, yeah one of the one of the theater sports actors um, was just like. Uh, what was he like all burnt out on drugs because blah blah it's like you know what just try to experience something happy in your life for once I won't mention I won't I, obviously I won't I won't name who it is but uh, uh, I was not friends with him before and I'm not friends with him now <laughs> he was Circus Boy he was in the TV show Circus Boy and I know you don't know what Circus Boy is but he was Circus Boy and Circus Boy imagine that there was a show in the 50s called Circus Boy I can picture He's, what it might be yep you, yeah, you've got it exactly yep, right and he it. was Circus Boy it's the Good yeah him. Dick Grayson in the early years yeah also this is a these are like actors that were hired to be in a band that wasn't a real band and then they became a real band and yeah. then the real band was really good. Yeah. I mean, it's it was... a pretty amazing story. Yeah. And I mean, they got Neil Diamond uh, in there writing some of the songs. Like, you know. Yeah. But even when those, like, again, they had the best writers and there's great things there. But later when they were writing their own stuff, it's still, wow. Yeah. The Porpoise like, Song. Go watch I like the Head song. sometimes. That movie that oh, Jack Nicholson wrote. Yeah. That film's bananas. It is. Yeah. Just when you look up the synopsis, it says, proudly without plot. Like it, it really is. There's just, just no plot to that movie. Um, yeah. But it's still good. It's well. Let's not say good. Yeah. But, <laughs> but as a filmmaker, you should watch it for sure. All right. Yeah. Um, and and there's some really good songs in it. And there is some good scenes. My favorite uh, thing in it is uh, where uh, uh, David Jones does a big dance number, and then afterwards you see uh, Frank Zappa. And I think he's walking a cow, and and David Jones comes out, and Frank Zappa says to him. Oh, you've been working on your uh, dance moves, huh? And he's like, yeah, yeah, I have. Oh, you should really work on your music. And then it just keeps going. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's a waste of time. Yeah, no, Head was, Head was uh, wacky, wacky movie. And uh, I got, I think, so CTV has a, has its own streaming platform and there are there's a lot of shows on there that you can actually access without any sort of membership or there's just commercials on it and i think the monkeys are on it so oh, okay. i'm gonna That's i'm gonna, to I'm gonna mean, check the, out the monkeys again, again the show some's good some's not so good but it's just you gotta kind of have this love of those things mm. as well. i mean you don't have to specifically watch every episode of you know uh, the old shows but you know just oh cool have an interest have a mm. <laughs> yeah it's it's always it's always been disappointing when you see somebody in the situation that they have chosen to be in, in their chosen job, and they're and they're bitter, negative jerks about it. Like, yep. What are you even doing? Why are you here? Why are you choosing to be in this place then? If this is yeah. the way you're going to act, yeah. Like so. we've all been hired guns for for things, but I think the three of the three about oh, let's just brag about what we do. 
Uh, but like, I think something that we all have in common is we all have created things and 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 made things and then put ourselves in those things because that's how you get into some things. Yes. Yeah. But like, was there a point with like both of you where you were frustrated with what was out there and so you decided to make your own things, or did you all did you want to just make your own things for making your own things sake? Yeah, I mean, I think I think that's always part of it is like looking at what exists and then and 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 thinking that you can like that your comment on it or the way that you do it is something that's missing and then you want to do it and you want to make it. Sometimes I just make things because I feel compelled to make things yeah. um, and I don't really know what the reasoning is behind it at all. So it goes both ways, I would say. Yeah. Yeah, it can be annoying sometimes where you get an idea. Like I had one 2 days ago that I just went, "Ah shit, now I got to do this." It's yes. like such a piss off. You're just like, yeah. I know how much work this is going to be, but yep. I know I can't not do it. Yep. So, ugh, but uh, it's still, yeah. you know. I mean, I I've, it's, go ahead. I've gotten really good at not doing things. I think that's one of my strengths. <laughs> you do a lot yeah, of things for so. someone who doesn't not do things then. Yeah, yeah. I can't imagine the amount of things you'd be doing if you were a person who did things. Because oh. you do a lot of things. I, like, I'd be really doing nothing tonight except your thing that you made. You, you called me up and went like, hey, the other thing I was going to do, I'm not going to do that thing, but I'm going to do this other thing that I'm going to, that we sometimes do. And I got to now replace the name of this other thing that I do, because that's already on the thing that I do. So you're like three things deep. I yeah. guess, I guess so. But it, it doesn't, and I always feel lazy. Oh, of course you feel yeah, lazy. I feel, like I feel lazy. Incredibly lazy. Yeah. My uh, wife feels lazy and she does infinite things. Oh my God. Yeah. My wife feels lazy. Yeah. I guess that's yes. a good thing. I believe that I am defined by my productivity. <laughs> yeah, I do feel for people, though, that, uh, like, are just, and I don't say just, but, like, uh, that uh, act, act. And so it's all just, like, waiting for the opportunities and mm -hmm. auditioning and hoping for the good stuff to come and not, you know, going, like, well, my friend can do this and my other friend can do this. Let's do a thing while we're waiting for yeah. those things. Yeah, yeah, let's spend all of the money that I saved up in my in my dumb side job to make a thing. Just yep. for the hell of making a thing. Yeah. And it's not going to make any money back because they never do. We're just going to do it. Just make yeah. a thing. Yeah, yeah sometimes just, I wish I wasn't that person, yeah. but I am that person. Just, <laughs> just make I'm a thing. I'm still paying for doing a show in England, uh, and I'm glad oh, I did, yeah. but it was like, holy moly. Yeah, it was like, well, what are you going to do? Not do a show in England? Yeah, what of course you're not. What you do in England? Uh, we did, um, with my uh, group uh, Canadian Content, uh, we rented a theater in uh, Leicester Square, like the little, th there's a big theater uh, in Leicester Square, and then there's a basement, uh, small theater, and we uh, took our show there for a month, and oh, we performed amazing. there. Yeah. And the, and the problem occurred when some people were like, uh, oh, how are we going to make money off this? Well, we're not going yeah. to make money off this. You go your first time to get seen, and then, you know, we were getting really nice reviews, and the houses were building, and it was all really nice, but there was a thing about, like, oh, we got to make money. Like, no, we don't. Uh, no, we don't have to make money now. I understand that you want to, and I get why. But no, you eat it the first time. This is like your fringe show that you do, and you eat it, and then you, you know, you build and you build and you build and you build. So there's that. But you know, it was it was very very fun to do, and I do not uh, I do not regret it. But oh yeah. boy, Oof. Yeah. yeah, I bet if you were in Leicester Square, God, I bet you racked up a bill for sure. Yeah, it was. Uh, yes, actually, it was fair because here's the thing: the theater itself. You know, yeah, it was that's a pricey one. But the basement was only like uh, thirty seats, oh, so right. you know, it was it was a black box, small little thing. And what we were thinking was because uh, London has actually a comedy and theater scene. Like, there's ninety comedy shows. There's literally like ninety plus comedy shows, or there was in London every month. People know to go see comedy. It's something that people do. Whereas you do yeah. in Vancouver, you've got to like go okay. Here's what comedy is. Let me explain. Let, let me explain what yeah. we do. And that's yeah. the thing I always find when we do improv shows. It's like, okay, so, and they don't have to do that with opera. You don't have to go out and go like, okay, so people are going to be singing. It's just <laughs> singing. Don't be thrown by all the singing. But like when we do our yeah. comedy things, we've got to yeah. go, all right, let me tell you. Yeah. Yeah. There's going to be, yeah. Are you yeah. yeah. Uh, so here at this theater, you're going to see uh, images projected on the screen. Now they're not Don't actually on the screen. 
Don't be upset. Sometimes... The dinosaurs won't come out. Yeah. Sometimes people will appear very large. That's only because the camera was closer to them at the time. This is the late 1800s. The train will not the train, run you over. Yeah. The guy with the gun will not shoot you. He is not a giant. Yeah. And, yeah still, I, Vancouver and comedy, we still have to go out and go, please don't talk while the comedian's on stage. Yeah. Please. Here's some basics. The, um, I think what... There's like an activation code for me I found that if somebody says, it's like, I'm like, oh, I'm thinking of doing this. And then there's the activation code. And that's someone saying, if you don't do this, somebody else will. And, and then that'll just make me upset. It's like, oh, I could have been doing that. <laughs> but that is, that is like a thing. I was like, oh, shit, shit. I gotta, I gotta do a talk show. Um, yeah. So. That's, that's, I think that's, that's my big thing. It's like, oh, I want to do this. And then, eh. And then someone's like, yeah, but if you don't, you know, if you. I always, it's funny. I always remember this thing that Ian, you told me once uh, while we were sitting in the tiny green room backstage at the Rio Theater before a critical hit show, I believe. Um, Brushing which was, off glitter from the yes, Leskers. Trying to get it off and it never comes off. Um, you said to me, um, cause I think I said something like, oh yeah, but that's been done. And you're like, every idea has been done, but it hasn't been done by you. Yeah. I'm like, okay, okay. 100%, yeah. 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 And like, is we did a James Bond, Bond show, but so what? You yeah. know, so Austin Powers also was a James Bond show. It, it, it's, it's your angle that you're going to do, and no one can do the same stuff yeah. that you do for sure. Yeah. 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 I mean, we've got, uh, my wife and I have a TV show that's floating around right now that's being pitched. And we're just like, oh, someone else is going to do this idea. But even if they do, you know, screw it. We'll, uh, you know, we'll do we'll do something with it. But you know, you have that feeling of like, Ugh. but yeah, there is no super duper original ideas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's which is quite comforting actually, because everyone. Yeah, and, and the comfort. idea isn't the thing. You know, the no. idea is not what's going to yeah. make you fall in love with uh, with something. Think of whatever you love as a TV or movie thing or play, and it's like it wasn't the idea that yeah. you know no. you like, love. People don't like the critical hit show because of the diaries of me. people oh, like sorry. people like critical hit shows because of the performers and the characters um yeah. and and but yeah and people will sometimes ask hey are you going to do a comedy show based on this role-playing game i was like no 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 this is that's this that's I, I i don't want to i've i've got that and i'll do comedy shows with the same people based on other things but not another like role-playing game thing like that's it, it's well, like um other- We'll do. Sorry, go ahead. I was gonna say it's it's like falling in love with a book for the font alone. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right, yeah. like it's... other people will do like other gaming shows. Yeah, and it'll be the same setup and potentially the same framing, and it still will not be the same show. Yeah, so. my That's... wife uh, didn't like improv when you know when she was younger, and uh, and then she came to see a show that I was in, which was Star Trek. And it was a Star Trek parody show. Again, like who hasn't done Star Trek? But like we were we were doing Star Trek and and she saw uh, kind of herself in the show. Like it was a show that was like, oh, this is for people like me. You're doing inside things as well as the broader stuff, but you're actually, oh, this is speaking to me. Whereas like a traditional improv show didn't feel like it was. So I think that's a big thing sometimes as people come to shows and they're like, oh yeah, this is, no, this is for me. Yeah. Specifically, I feel like this yeah. is for me. And if you can get that, then you've really got someone who will be coming back over and over again and you want to say to them yeah you're right it is yeah. <laughs> you know you yeah. do your weird little show you do you know and you go like yeah i mean gentlemen hecklers of yeah. course you know uh, it's it's a dubbing uh, not dubbing but it's a talking over show yeah. okay so people have been doing that since the 60s that's yeah. fine oh yeah but you've got your own style and your your own people and what you specifically talk about is going to be different than uh the the other ones Oh. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's... And I love the fact that I love the fact that when somebody comes to the show and is like, "This is for me." Ah, this is the th- this is this this one's for me. That also means that there's going to be people in the audience who are like, "Well, this isn't for me at all." And that's kind of kind of great because sometimes you hear those voices a lot louder, like those people who are like, "This sucks. I hate this. Get off the stage." And you hear those voices a lot louder. But if you're hearing those, that probably means there those there's those other people too who are like, "No, no, this is what I want. This is what I'm here for." Yeah, yeah. People make the mistake. Okay, we're getting into philosophy here. People yeah, make the mistake going, "I got to make something that's for everybody." And it's like, no, 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 no. Yeah. You make something very specific, very, very specific. It's like, well, there's gonna be people that won't like that, uh huh. But the people that do like it are gonna really, really like it. And yeah. those are the people, who are, and that's the audience that's gonna build on that. 
And yeah, like you say, we're doing critical hit. What are we like year nine? Uh, or something like that. February eight. February will be our ninth anniversary. Yeah, that's you know what? What are you talking about in in this economy? Um, it's, yeah, it's insane. That's just that's amazing to me, and I don't know how to do Dungeons and Dragons. Yeah, it's. <laughs> I still don't. You don't need to. I mean, you don't like. I think, yeah. I, I teach people I'll how to do play, the and it takes that I can do. Yeah. 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 I've, heard, I've heard that before, and then I'm making up a character for like two hours. <laughs> and, then, and then and then my elf is fucking killed in a forty five minutes. That was my experience. <laughs> um, Go I, inside. You're dead. What? Two hours. <laughs> I spent creating this guy. Can I bring him back? No, what? dead forever. Well, that's like what what uh, Sean did, right? Where like one one dwarf died, and then just the next one came on with a slightly different name. Yeah, that's what he just brought his his, his brother. His brother showed up the next episode yeah. with a with a slightly different uh, yeah. with a slightly different name. Um, yeah, I just try to make stuff that like I want to see or or stuff that I like, and I, I and I just hope people are coming along coming along for the ride. And so far they have which is great yeah. um yeah very here's the thing that i found too is like people with uh, with improv people worry sometimes you know it's like oh this thing i'm doing isn't funny or they worry about the silences or whatever it's like people will remember the stuff they love and they'll remember the stuff they hate and everything in the middle out of their memory completely oh, yeah. yeah they'll remember the real stinkeroos and they'll remember the the really great stuff and that's and that's it because you haven't got room in your brain for that remember that mediocre scene no gone so don't worry about it yeah, yeah. Strong beginning, strong finish. Middle, who cares? It's fine. <laughs> yeah, or there's just one weird thing in the middle of it that, like, they make, got a big laugh. And it's like, yeah. that's all they'll remember, but they'll remember that. Yeah. And then you're fine. So, you know, do your weird, crazy bullshit. Just yeah. Do, just do it. Yeah. yeah. Oh, and, you know, stuff like this, these, this online platform now is, like, I couldn't do this in a bar. <laughs> I mean, if this wasn't going on and I pitched this, they'd be like, uh, I don't know, Eric. <laughs> I don't know. Will it bring people in? Uh, it, this doesn't matter because we're, we're, we're here online. We can, we can, I find I can make stuff here that I probably couldn't out there. Yeah. Out, out there. <laughs> where it's scary. It always felt to me every time I came up with anything, I would end up at the UBC Endowment Lands in the Woods. Didn't matter if it was for CDC oh or the smallest thing or the biggest thing. So many They're just times. like, yeah, off you go to the woods. That's where <laughs> yeah. you're going. You're gonna get covered yeah. in mud, Jack. Yeah. Any oh, any experience with the shooting stuff out in the the woods like that, Joanna? Holy shit! Oh, I spent years. I feel like lying in the mud in various different yeah. weather with people who were different and and the same. And yeah, lots of wood. Lots of lots and lots of woods. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, I wound up in a couple of episodes of Standard Action, one or two, and I think one of them was out in the woods. And I was, uh, yeah, I'm surprised. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. And then one of them was uh, that you you made a music video for us. Yes. So, oh, this was this was amazing. So Joanna used to have this garage that was converted oh, yeah. into a tavern. Yeah. Like it was amazing, and it was like a just legit tavern. And, um, I, oh yeah, I co-wrote, I wrote and sang a parody of, um, Never Gonna Give You Up from the point of view of a dungeon master. Yeah. (laughs) And I recorded, uh, the vocals in a closet the morning after a six year relationship had ended. Oh, I forgot that part. And it, and it wasn't my call. Uh, so, so I was in a great spot when I recorded it, but the, the, the sound designer just basically just auto-tuned the shit out of me and then it sounds great. <laughs> well, yeah, Kirsten, our sound designer was, was brilliant. So yes, yeah, know, I'm sure that you gave him good stuff, but it sounds <laughs> awful. Well, I, I now have a, 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 a credit on the IMDB as a lyricist. So, oh, nice. yeah, 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 That's good. yeah. yeah. Yeah, that was that was that, it was one of those situations where we lived in this in in, in this house. It was cheap-ish rent, but the landlord was the worst. Um, but we had this garage out the back, and the landlord wasn't using it. And we said, "Well, can we can we just use it? Is it is it cool if we get in there and use it?" And they're like, "Yeah, sure." And they thought we were going to use it for storage, and uh, yeah, we turned it into a tavern. Yeah, 
Edwin Perez and Carla Miller and Rob Hunt and I turned it into a tavern. It was awesome. Yeah, you, you filmed fantastic. a lot of stuff in there. I filmed a couple of whiskey tasting videos there and yeah. a talk show. And, we had a talk show. And yeah. then there was, um, you did a web series uh, called Starlet Citadel where you and Kaya um, would review games. And we played a game and I was in character as as a wizard. So I did... Um, I did this guy's voice uh, yes. for the wizard. I've got my puppets yeah, right playing, here. Uh, Red Dragon Inn, I think. Yes. Yeah, that yeah. was a lot of fun. That was great. That's yeah. that's somewhere out on the internet. Um, yes, it is. On YouTube. On the Starlet Citadel. What am I? It's somewhere. It's on the Starlet Citadel's YouTube uh, channel. The Starlet Citadel reviews YouTube again. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, so one of the things we do here at Laser Chat is we talk about cursed items and good luck charms. Uh, do you have items that you would either say are a cursed item or a good luck charm? Let's start with Joanna. Joanna, what do you okay. got here for us here? Well, it's cool that we were just talking about standard action because I have this um, this good luck charm <laughs> right here. Oh, my God. So, yes. So this is a tiny hand crossbow. Uh, don't uh, worry. You will not be shot through the camera. Um <laughs> It doesn't actually fire, but it was a prop from Standard Action, and now it sits at my front door, um, um, guarding me from any intruders. Isn't it beautiful? It's That's like gorgeous. Yeah, that is gorgeous. Like, really great. Yeah. What, did made, that get made for Standard Action? No, actually. So we had a we had a, a a man named Aaron Harrison help us out with weaponry and armor for season two, two and three. Maybe. Um, and he made a bunch of stuff for us, but then he also had this piece that he had just made for fun. And he was like, yeah, no, it's a little work in your show. You should, uh, you should take it. So, yeah. So this was, um, our sorcerer, uh, Wendy, who was played mm. by Tara Pratt, uh, used to carry this around and, uh, and gesture with it a lot. Cause it's not, it's not practical. It doesn't <laughs> <fall>. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I feel it's creepy yeah. though. That does look like it would fire. Oh my god! I know, right? I yeah. feel like I feel like a tricorn hat would go well with it. You know, I think Aaron actually had a tricorn hat that he would uh, wear quite often with one of those like leather, uh, like what are they like? What, are, what duster? is duster? A called? leather duster? Duster. Yeah, that the cowboys yeah. wear. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. So I mean, it could. I don't think it's a cursed item. I think it's more of a good luck charm. It's definitely a good luck charm. I don't think there's anything. Uh... Accursed about it. it's not like say a shattered jar of salsa. No, <laughs> that's a that's a curse. That is a cursed item. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kind of thing you'd see in New York City. New York City. Uh, <laughs> yeah. It. Or the bodega around the corner. Yeah. <laughs> Get a rope. I miss those ads. Um, I, I, yeah. I, I, as I've, I've mentioned, I mentioned literally every time I stream that I watch old '80s commercial compilations on YouTube. And yeah. I can't get enough of them. I just put them on. It's like the it's like background noise when I like do dishes or, or clean. And then I find myself humming these jingles that I haven't heard since I was four. And uh, it's uh, yeah. some of them are pretty good. And some of the ads are just like a lot of local ads for mattress stuff. And uh, yes. there was like a car ad. And it was this one guy. And it was a guy named Dave. And he would talk like this. And this is how he would talk the whole time. And he actually at one point said, so come on down because old Dave needs the money. <laughs> oh, Dave. Oh, poor I, old I just Dave. found I just found two, uh, two old commercials I did in the 90s on the same day. And, uh, or one day apart. And one of them, I'm uh, I, I, a lonely guy who works at a computer store. And I go home and like all my computer stuff is turning on when I get there and someone mentioned something that I didn't realize before, cause I'm going home late at night and uh, a coffee maker starts up and I'm like, why am I drinking coffee at night? And also, and also you look at it and it just looks like a black mirror episode is about to start. <laughs> and uh, my house is going to talk to me. And it's just like, uh, I'm, I'm clearly lonely and something horrible has gone on, but it was, it was, it was, it was fun to see. I thought, and, I thought uh, you were like a detective. I, saw, I think I remember this commercial. Sure. I, I always thought you were like a private detective and that's why. Okay. Yeah, sure. And I'm undercover at the computer store. Yeah. Or am I just talking to people at the computer store at the beginning? Maybe. You're collecting think... collecting information at the computer store. Yeah. It sounds to me a little bit like the uh, the Keanu Reeves in the Matrix sitting in his like thing oh. doing. Oh. Oh, I see what you're saying. Doing nice. Hacking. Maybe you did stuff at the computer store during the day, and then you make a little extra scratch at night by searching for yeah. illicit information nice. on the webs. And I always have to mention, because it's my one Keanu Reeves story, is the very first job Keanu Reeves got in acting 
Uh, it came down to him and me, and he got it. So anyway, um, good, oh, for, wow. good for him. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad that he's. Uh, <laughs> it worked out. It worked out yeah. okay. Worked yeah, out. when when we were both twelve, we were both that tight. Then we stopped being that tight, but for a very <laughs> brief window before puberty hit, uh, we were that tight. Well, uh, what's so the job? can you can you tell us what the job is? Yeah, it was a TV show, uh, CBC TV show called Hanging In. Okay. And it was about uh, uh, hip counselors. They were helping the youth. And so uh, we were both, uh, we were troubled youth. Oh, okay. And we were both auditioning for the thing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And you can see that that clip is on uh, us on YouTube. You see his uh, first thing. And then he went from there to doing a TV show called Going Great. Uh, that was uh, a show that I knew a lot of people ended up on, which was about uh, young people and what they're doing. And uh, he would like interview uh, oh. usually young women uh, and uh, they'd be like, so you like horses, huh? Okay. And then we go uh, horse riding with them and whatnot. It's it's worth seeing. It's also very, very odd. But yeah, I had that one commercial and uh, there's another commercial. And again, it's the 90s because you can tell because it's like uh, what men really want. Mm-hmm. Is, is the thing for it. And it's uh, we're walking through the mall with our wives or whatever. And uh, then we uh, get sucked off the ground and fly into a window. And then we're looking at electronic stuff because we really like electronic stuff so much that we will fly away from our wives uh those harpies and uh be stuck to the window and enjoying uh did you get to do like wire work yes and here's what i learned (gasps) oh my gosh so we so first of all there was a uh, this is where i i I quit my agent my agent told me going in it's like if they want you to do any stunts you tell me and i will get you extra money for that because that is not what they want so we go in and yes wire work where we're going to be uh pulled uh 50 feet in the air fast zoom up so i'm like aha Call my agent. Uh, yeah, it's stunts. Oh, that's fine. Uh, actually, do you want to talk to him about it? No, 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 that's good. Just do it. Uh, okay. <laughs> wow. So uh, you're a bad agent. So the guy who's going on before me is like a, a, a older than me, and they're asking, do you want the padding, more padding? And he's like, eh, I'm fine. Okay. So uh, he doesn't go for the extra padding because he's a manly man. Yeah, he's tough guy. Padding. Yeah, tough guy. Uh, so he goes up and comes down. And he's clearly very hurt by this. He's not doing well. No. Maybe bleeding. Not oh my great. god! So yeah, when it's my turn, I am wearing infinity padding, it's <laughs> as much padding as humanly possible. Uh, if you watch the ad, maybe you can see that that I'm very padded up. But yeah, yeah. <laughs> you're like you're like Ralphie's little brother with all the parkas on yeah. in the Christmas all story. The pretty, yeah. pretty, pretty much. Yeah, and it was directed by this guy Lol Cream, who is from a band called Godly and Cream who had a rock video from a couple of years before that was a uh, cry. That was the first morphing video. Oh, wow. Uh, yeah. And uh, wow. he was, uh, he's in a band called 5440 and oh, they're yeah. very, very popular in the, in the eighties and the nineties. So it's like, that was, that was weird. So anyway, that's my whole story. And I've rambled. Uh, no, 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 no. That, this is items you say, this no. is, this is what laser chat is all about. What have you got Ian? Uh, I've got, uh, speaking of what we were speaking about, I've got little Lego Shakespeare. Little Lego Shakespeare. Let me see if oh. I can get him so that you can actually see. Oh yes, there he is. Oh my gosh! Right. And okay. so I consider him a good luck uh, because uh, he's done it all already. Like he reminds me that every plot has been done as we talked about, and so don't worry about it. And also, I like that when he couldn't uh, have the right word for something, you just make up words, and yes. he just made up all these words came from Shakespeare. And I was like, yeah, just make yeah, up, not? make up all these things. Yeah. yeah. Make it up and I love that he had a, yeah I love that he had a play called Much Ado About Nothing. Yeah. That is a that is a baller name for your play. <laughs> yes. <laughs> bold bold choice. Yeah, all these other ones were just like about you know a, a a tempest and uh, it's all exciting and then it's just like eh, not much. Yeah. Yeah. Eh. Yeah, what what, what, big, what, big what to do, not a big yeah. deal. Yeah, whatever. What what happens do about nothing. Yeah. yeah. What, what, give, what happens in your play? Read the title. Yeah, it's three hours. It's three hours. Yeah, it'll be it'll be infinity time. Enjoy. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Uh, I like your little Shakespeare. I like. I have. I have Legos of most of the Critical Hit Show cast uh, because there was there was an episode we did where um, we we, you had to climb a um, yes yes a colossus like a giant statue. And, um, so I made, I had little Lego figures made of everyone. And I think within five minutes of giving Alan Morrison the Lego Spitzlubin, he lost the hair. Hmm. 
I think it was like five minutes. I think I like handed it to everybody and I left the, the green room and I came back. Um, I and guess maybe that's kind of like a premonition, really, because his hair all got cut off. Was, that's, that's was it true. long hair for the Lego figure or was it? Short? It was it was short. It was short hair for the Lego figure. Oh, okay. And um, the 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 Colossus um, wound up being uh, I didn't know her at the time. But it was uh, Heather Gilbraith, who is, you know, like the amazing artist Heather Gil- Gilbraith, who's, who's mm-hmm. done our poster art, who's done so much stuff for Critical Hit. And it was super cool. Um, yeah. But yeah, I do have Lego Uses somewhere. I think it was before Ellen joined. So it's it's the fi- five of us. Or so it's the six of us. Yeah. I've got a couple of different action figures that I've made up of, uh, of, of, of casts that, uh, you know, I've needed casts. So I'll, like, go to... I also collect a lot of weird little action figures, so often when I need one, I'll try to find one that looks like you or looks like you, and mm-hmm. then gather them together and, and get them up for uh, for for whatever scene that we need. Dress them up. Yeah, there's. I was looking up um, like custom Amigo figure bits and bobs, and you can just buy like parts now and outfits and just like get them to look however you want. I I was this close to buying Amigo. Eric, with a little plaid well, you've shirt. You've been laser scanned, though, haven't you? You've got an actual thing of your face. Um, yeah, right? I, I don't. Ha- I, I years ago, I got, I got, um, I got like scanned by this thing, and then they used my face uh, to demonstrate um, the technology. <laughs> yeah, and they cool. put they put my head on Amigo. You got Max Headroom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, they uh, they put my head on Amigo uh, Captain Kirk figure. What more do you want? Yeah, well, I want wow. the figure is what that's I want. Like, I, I, <laughs> oh, yeah. I feel but, like that's career height, though. I mean, oh, you can't I go much higher than that. No, you that's... can't. No, it's, it's been downhill from there. I think if you pay for that, I think it's like 200 bucks or something. Yeah, I didn't. Which sounds like a lot. And then you go, that's not a lot for a for a, like an action figure of yourself that you'll always have. Like yeah. a statue of, of you. Yeah, I didn't get to keep it. Mm. Which is yeah. a shame. But, eh, you know, that's... You know, eh. it exists somewhere it, in the world. It exists somewhere in the world. It, well, maybe not. Maybe it's been thrown away. It's been seven yeah, years. Do we do we all have weird prop uh, boxes full of stuff? Yes. Oh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. I mean, I, I have, feel like yeah, the three of us have very like infinite. Like again, we're sorting through the basement and doing mm-hmm. like a value village run probably tomorrow. But they, we got to go through it and just go like, well, no one will ever. I can't give this away. It's it's nuts. Yeah, I've merged yeah. two things and oh, made this yeah. laser gun, and they like there's no home for this butt here. Well, there's yeah, the giant but... bin still in the basement of the Rio, I think. Sure. That's yeah, basically the show. I feel like it it became two giant bins. It's um one's oh. just weapons. Um, yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, yeah, I've got like over here, just I've got like stuff that I can reach for for like critical hit. Like I always have the cosmic <laughs> chub nearby, and right. and I've also got. Um, Spitz's brother, uh, Fritz Lubin here. Oh, nice. Oh, Fritz. So, yeah, there's just in a little dragon and yeah, I've got weird boxes full of. Yeah. I um, always have a Batman mask, you know, should it come down to it. I've got one of those too. I've got one of those just right over there. Why wouldn't you? I've got props from that British show still here. There, I got that. I got like a (laughs) hockey helmet there. Looks like the green power ranger now that I look at it that way. Yeah. Yeah. I, I still have um, Becky, uh, who was uh, Eric, your character's um, the Kobold uh, I broke up with. Kobold lover, yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. yeah. I remember, I remember Becky. That was a I great mean, little puppet. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. It's one of those things where it's like I can't. What do I do with? I can't do anything with this. I'm not gonna. What? It, like it's a puppet. It's not something you can take to a secondhand store or whatever. Nobody wants it. So it. She just lives with me. Yeah. Yeah. I'm yeah actually, these. Go ahead. I'm one of those people who definitely doesn't keep everything, so I probably mm-hmm. don't have as many props as I used to, um, just because I don't have enough space and I move quite often. But yeah, there's there are boxes for sure. Yeah, yeah. We were setting up uh, the basement. We actually took we we rented a house, and then it was like we couldn't afford the basement. Then we went ah, we can afford the basement if we make it a place where we shoot stuff. Okay, that's fine. So we rent in the basement and we set it up with a green screen. We're ready to do things and get all our costumes and props. And then uh, almost immediately, you know, the plague hits. And it's like, well, can't have anyone over. So it's in this weird half yeah. half state right now where 
there are sewing machines there that uh, were being used to make masks for people and stuff like that. I've still got stuff there where I do the Sneaky Dragon podcast and what have you, and I do some writing down there. But yeah, it's in this real just half state of like, uh, ready to do something. It's just yeah. about ready. I... Ready? No, not yet. Or what? <laughs> yeah, well, I, I went there, yeah. That... Sorry, go ahead, Eric. Oh, I was just going to say, like, yeah, shortly before all this happened, I, I you gave me a tour of of your place and yeah the basement is yeah you're like oh yeah i'm gonna set up the green screen then there's like a bar area um that you were gonna shoot you could do live shows here if you wanted to should come down to it Mm. when when the plague goes away give me a tour as well yes for sure okay no this thing this is the thing it's like i know i'm gonna be making stuff with you guys for years and years and years so and you're also both the kind of heroes of mine for the stuff that you do so i find it very encouraging and there's people that you get an energy from that you're just like okay and there's people that you get an energy from that you're like, okay, but <laughs> you guys are very much the mm, energy that oh, you can well, tap thank into. You. And, and go. Well, the feeling is mutual. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Likewise, thank you. We're all great. Let's admit that. Much. Yeah, we're yeah. all. We're all some of the greatest great. people I've ever, ever, ever been. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why those others didn't stick around the, the several billion years of Earth. That's why we're here now. We're the best. <laughs> yeah. Hey, dinosaurs, you quitters. Yeah. yeah. Why don't yeah. you just become birds, you cowards? Yeah. You, you know what we do to you now? We eat you. We eat you. Rotisserie style. Mm-hmm. I do have some gigantic birds down the street that I'm terrified of. So, oh, yeah. Okay. Actually, actually, there's an eagle's nest on the other side, too, that I do not want to mess with. And then there's some yeah, her- herons down the street that honestly are just freaking dinosaurs. And oh, usually yeah. they'll be on a garage and you'll just be like, what's this? What's this pterodactyl? Oh, and they have such long beaks. And you're like, oh, you could, yeah. like, you could stab me in the face with that and my brain Absolutely. would be done i would have no brain left yeah yeah there's nothing we can Here. do i see like five raccoons and i'm just like well i can't fight that yeah <laughs> yeah there's no they're gonna just all <laughs> yeah and they exactly. all have opposable thumbs and i only have one set and they have five among them so yeah, yeah. and they each have a different strain of rabies so that's mm. its own thing so many shots you'll have to get for that. Oh, so many shots. Yeah. I knew two people who got rabies last year, oh, the year before last. Two. Yeah, yeah. One with the bat, right? Yeah, both were bats. What? Both were bats. Oh. Both were bat situations, yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah. Hey, guys, watch out for rabies. If you ever get scratched by a bat or bitten by a bat, then go check with the doctor. And it's one of those things where you go to the emergency and you're like, this is going to take forever. And they go, well, what'd you do? Oh, we got uh, bitten by a bat. Oh, come right in. <laughs> and whenever you get the when it, I've had a couple of times they come right in and I'm like oh that's not good yeah, yeah. you get to come right in and uh, they don't mess around with that because uh, rabies 100% fatal oh 100%. my god 100 so take care of that yeah stop it stop the yeah. rabies yeah you're not gonna walk off the rabies you're not gonna take some zinc and then uh, deal with the rabies <laughs> some <laughs> zinc I hear vitamin D is good for it. <laughs> yeah it's really good well, vitamin D a little zinc that's all you need you know it's yeah. actually healthy for you to get rabies once in a while. Yeah, well, yeah, grapeseed extractals get that. Uh, yeah, you get the herd immunity for the rabies. Yeah. Just flushes yeah. it out. <laughs> yeah, and that's how The Walking Dead happened. Everyone was yeah. going for the herd immunity for the rabies. <laughs> well, we give, okay, so we give, uh, like, my cat got a rabies vaccine. Do people not get rabies vaccines? Do we just, is we just not exposed to it enough to get a vaccine? That's, I feel like 100% is, mortality, we should get them. That's a good question. That's an excellent question. I'm I sure. don't believe I've been vaccinated for rabies. I think, I think... I don't think humans are. Yeah. No. Yeah, I don't think that's in the... You know the, what? Uh, when we eventually get the COVID uh, thing, I'm going to ask about that and just go, hey, while you're here. Yeah. You, yeah. Got, ra- you got the rabies? A rabies uh, chaser. Two. Give me that. Rabies <laughs> chaser. <laughs> just give me one of the ones that you usually give to like a great date. So yeah. It's just, you know, weight, weight equivalent. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. What's, uh, that's not, yeah, that's right. Just give me, no, just give me that. I don't know. Probably, how probably it won't work at all. I think, oh, uh, let's ask this of the, uh, like, I can't see them, but hey, uh, people that are watching this, yeah. uh, do you get a rabies vaccine? Like, how's that go? Like, you, you can't get vaccinated. Or maybe you can't get vaccinated for rabies, but like in dogs. Yeah. My cat has it. Yeah. Why's well, yeah. my cat getting all these perks? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> all stuck up. It's yeah. meowing at the door right now. <laughs> asking, Bragging. asking, where's my rabies shot? My meow. <laughs> <laughs> wants to go out and, and and become come in close contact with a bat so that she can try out her rabies vaccine. That's right. Don't go eating bats. I think that led to some other bad stuff recently. So I feel not like bad bats stuff. Generally, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. No. Like, I know bats are great, but 
every time you mention them, it's in this horrific story that's getting us all killed. So yeah. it's just like, you know, again, I'm pro bat. Generally, it's good. They eat mosquitoes. I appreciate it. Yeah. Oh, and yeah. They're, they're pretty cool. They're all flying now. They're amazing. Yeah. Except they'll kill you. Yeah. They give you the little a snick. <laughs> and it's like, well. Yeah. Occasionally they'll make a Batman. They'll fly in a window. A guy will go, I'll dress like a bat. And uh, you know, he makes an R rated movie and goes, fuck. It's just fuck. Yeah. It's too grim dark. It's all bad. Yeah. yeah. That's what's going to. Oh, by the way. You know what you're saying? Zack Snyder says uh, Batman's going to say fuck. Mm -hmm. I don't think so. I think what's going to happen is you're going to have the origin scene, and it's going to be uh, Bruce Wayne who's sitting in you know the big room going, oh, "What do I do?" And then the mm -hmm. bat flies in, and then then he goes, "Fuck!" Oh, bat. <laughs> That'll be the one time he swears. Yeah, I mean, and it wasn't written in the script. Robert Pattinson just yeah. doesn't give a shit about well, what the. Oh, that's a different one. Yeah, Robert Pattinson as well. I don't so he's just of them. like he's like I'm going to swear in this scene, and the director's like. Mm, Maybe don't swear in that he's like i'm just gonna do what i want i'm robert pattinson yeah <laughs> that's what he did for the lighthouse i'm robert pattinson i do what i want <laughs> do what i want and it's gonna be amazing because i'm robert pattinson <laughs> yeah he's pretty great he's pretty rad i was i was excited to hear that like when they announced him as batman i was like oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. i know right yeah i like it though so if you want an oscar you gotta be the joker yeah so that's nice. the deal no, no one gives the oscar to batman but everyone gives the oscar to the joker so that's mm -hmm. what i'm telling you yep Earphones mm -hmm. don't get an Oscar. That's what I'm going to say. Guy with the bad ears, no dice, clown face. Yeah, that's a mistake. Oh, poor Jared Leto. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> poor the Jared. Joker. We don't care. What? What do you mean you don't care? Yeah, it's fine. Uh, I can't keep track of them all. Damaged. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Well, he, has yeah, a, he has the tattoo on his I forehead. I have a lot of personal problems. <laughs> Damn it. Ask yeah. me about them. Yeah, you're a yes, you're you're a, you're, just, you're a clown. Your your default your default is actual clown. Yes, there's a lot of you don't need to write damage. It's like a little I would say on the nose, but it's right there. I would like to see him at one point uh shoot someone, a psychiatrist, and say, I am Pagliacci. I would like to see the Joker do that. One. Yeah, yeah, I think he's gonna pull that out. Yeah. Oh, Zack Snyder. Oh, of course he's gonna do that. There's no way that's not in the next uh, <laughs> next film. That's completely up uh, Snyder's alley. Wait, wait, wait! In the chat here, hold on. Going back away from away, almost away from bats. Um, Bees love vanilla too. I think that's. <laughs> who is that? That's that's your. That's Jenny. That's that's that's, that's, that's yeah. yeah. Um, she says that um, that tetanus is human rabies. Oh, okay. Like All tetanus right. is like anthropomorphic mammalian rabies. Okay, so when we're getting a tetanus shot, we're getting so a when shot. You're getting a tetanus for human vaccine. Rabies. You're getting a vaccine against well, rabies. Okay. And uh, Layla mentions there's a rabies vaccine for humors. It's it's just a lot, usually just wildlife rescue folks and vets get it. Oh, okay. All right. Cool. This is good information. Yeah. Yeah. You know, this isn't us just bragging about our dumb commercials we've done. This is uh, this is good life-saving information we're giving out now. Good Absolutely. This is this. this is good trivia to know. And speaking of trivia, we need to find out which of you is going to be crowned president of the internet. Last oh, okay. last show, it was uh, Raylan Carson uh, beat out Casey Novak to be president of the internet. The week right. before that, it was uh, Dylan Reimer and Carla Ma as mm -hmm. a tie. Let me ask you this. Can the president of the internet get impeached? And for what? The president of the internet's only power is to be able to make light entertainment friendly decrees. Very nice. That is their, okay. own, that is their only power. That is it. Okay. Um, so they can light change... Light entertainment friendly. Okay. Yeah. Like... Um, you know, what, what would you change about the internet? You know, uh, more short stories about mangoes. Just as an example. Um, sure. That was mine. Oh. <laughs> I know. I, I wanted to make sure that I that I took yours, Joanna. Um, <laughs> so we're going to ask three questions here. A couple of them are multiple. Tales of Chutney. <laughs> okay. I'll write that down. Write that down. Tale, <laughs> Tales of Chutney. Now I want some chutney. I'm going to probably have some chutney after this. Oh, chutney. Yeah. A little chutney, a little yogurt on toast, a little chutney. Be nice, huh? That'd be very good. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm. I got a jar of that really good stuff that you can get. Um, that you only get in the UK. That's like caramelized onion, uh, caramelized onion chutney, and it's like the special one from Waitrose. Oh, okay. okay. 
Yeah, that everybody and, and you and over there they have chutney and cheese sandwiches, oh, which is just yeah. this. Oh, chutney. delicious! Yeah. yeah, and then cheese. And I have a jar of that stuff that uh, yeah that I got from a from a friend in England. It's very very good. Just I thought I thought for a second you said Westeros. And I'm like, I don't think it's a real place. I think she's making this up. <laughs> mm, you can taste the king's landing in every spoonful. <laughs> oh, my skin's turning very hard for some reason. Scaly. Oh, that's no good. Nope. Um, so yeah, I've got a couple. Of, I've got three trivia questions for you. Two of them are multiple choice, um, and one isn't. Uh, so the first one is Barbara mo- Eden. The answer is Barbara Eden. Well, who so played Jeannie? Sorry, on- oh my god. <laughs> Okay. Um, I was thinking Harper Valley PTA, but okay, oh, go ahead. Okay. <laughs> so what do we, do we, we don't just, do we, do we jump in? No, we like no, think what, of our answer. Of, what like, I'm going to do, I'm going to ask you the question. You're going to answer it. I'm going to write down your answer. And I'm going to do that for all three questions. So, and then at the end, I'll reveal the three questions, the, the three okay, answers. Okay, so we don't jump in. You ask, you know, you and then you. And then well, yeah, so in. for the first question. Um, yes. The first known use of the term OMG mm-hmm. for, oh my God. Uh, was in what year? Here are your options. Okay. Is it A, 1917? Okay. B, 1969? Okay. C, I like that year. That's a good year. Nice. <laughs> C, 1982? Okay. Or D, 1998? So the okay. first known use of the term OMG for Oh My God was in what year? 1917, 1969, 1982, or 1998. All right, I have a suspicion. Do we tell you now? Or yeah, yeah, you can tell me now. You can... Okay, my suspicion is... And I know that the, the, the easy one to do is go 1917 because who knew? Who knew? And it was like in the war. Mm-hmm. And they said it and they said in the war because we had to do it. The beep, 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 beep. But I'm going to go with and be wrong. 1982 because I think that would be the time Valley Girl uh, that uh, Moon Unit Zappa's uh, Valley Girl uh, song came out and the movie Valley Girl shortly afterwards with Nicolas Cage. And I think that's where uh, we, it would have come into common use. So I'm going to go mm-hmm. with 1982 though I'm wrong and I know it's 1917. Because it always is. <laughs> it's always 1917. They made a whole movie about it. Uh, yeah. Joanna, what is your um, answer? Well, see, my when I was listening to those dates, my first instinct was to go with 1982 because I thought, well, that makes sense. And, you know, mm-hmm. I, I feel like, but but whenever I do that, whenever I, whenever I go with the one that I think it is, it's always the one that's one earlier. So I bet it, I bet it could have happened in the 60s. I'm going to go with that 1960s date. What was that? 1969. 1969. Nice. It feels like we're Wally Shawning him. I'm just like, but you know that we know that it's always the early one. So you could clearly not go with that. But then, you know, man is mortal. So you could clearly not go with 69 because it's such an obvious uh, sexual double. It happened all of those years. Um, Fortunately, I have uh, I have developed uh, <laughs> an, immuni- an immunity. To- I oh have God. turned sixty nine upside down, and now it's still sixty nine. Oh, wow, so I have to go with that one. Inconceivable. Clearly, go with that. All right. All right question number two yeah. is multiple choice once again. Uh, yeah. Which one of these is not is not the name of a nineteen eighty seven Transformers toy released by Hasbro? Oh, God damn, we're doing so, this again. Okay, all right, let's go. Three of these are Transformers. One of them is not. I had okay. so many. This is in my wheelhouse. Bugs okay. me so much that I don't get this. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so okay. here we go. Here are your options. Is it A, blow pipe? Okay. Sorry, say that one again? Blow pipe. Yeah, the James Bond villain. Yeah. <laughs> okay, all right. So okay. blow pipe, named after your father. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, B, head shaft. Head shaft. Okay. C. Night stick. Okay. Night stick. Okay. Or D. Wide load. Okay. Wide load. Three of these were actually characters. Three yeah. of these were actual characters. Uh, keeping in mind that um, in other in a previous one we did discover that there was a transformer named Lube. <laughs> oh. Okay, I'm gonna let uh, let you go first this okay. time. Okay. 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 Um, by let I mean make. 
I feel like I feel like wide load could definitely be. I, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna I think wide load is 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 legit. Yeah. Um, nightstick. I feel like I've heard that somewhere, so I'm gonna go with I heard it in Transformers. So now it comes down to blowpipe and head shaft. Blowpipe and head shaft. Head shaft. What is that even? What is a head shaft? A neck? I'm gonna go with head shaft. Head shaft, okay. I was thinking a head shaft as well, except there was a line of toys called uh the headmasters. Yep. And so I feel like there could have been all just like, you know, as like head of the company and head, a lot of things that make sense. And then they uh, left, I don't know. So that's a possibility. <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, and the headmasters would be heads that you could uh, take off of Transformers and they make your own little robot, put them on, make a robot out of them. And so you get two robots. Oh. And it, wasn't, it wasn't great. Um, it's also a comic book, which was really not good. Uh, <laughs> I am gonna listen. I get that. Why? Uh, see, the why load just feels like were there fat jokes on Transformers, and I can't remember that. I don't remember fat jokes on Transformers, and mm -hmm. I can't see how you would have wide load and not do horrible '80s and '90s fat jokes. But I can't remember any fat jokes on Transformers. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna go wide load for for that though. Yeah, okay. yeah, probably right with Henshin. Okay, so I'm going wide load. Wide okay. load, okay. And your third and final question. According to the song, Don't Stop Me Now by Queen, mm -hmm. what temperature do you reach when traveling at the speed of light? <laughs> Keeping in mind, Brian May has a PhD in, I think, oh, astrophysics. Oh my God, how do I do this without singing the whole fucking song? <laughs> and, uh, and we're not allowed to sing the song out loud. What's the name of the song again? Don't Stop Me Now. Oh, God. Okay. I'm going to go 1,000 degrees. Okay. I'm going to go 1,000 degrees. What scale? Oh, is it uh, Kelvin? No. Uh, 1,000 <laughs> degrees, i got to go. Uh, uh, they call me uh, Mr. Fahrenheit. Okay. So it would have to be Fahrenheit. There you go. And uh, remember, closest wins uh the so, point so we are actually going for a number here then okay yeah right. i think i got it wrong too i'm now realizing that i got it wrong good luck john um oh, I, I got like... it wrong <laughs> <laughs> i feel like if i'm thinking about song lyrics i don't know the song at all um and like what scans nicely and what i would like to sort of rhythm into a line i'm gonna go with 500 degrees um, and I'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna go with Celsius because no Queen Fahrenheit 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 yeah yeah all right okay locked in your answers so your yeah. first oh last week's last week's question there was one um, <clears throat> it was what what was Post Malone's name before being known as Post Malone and one of the options was Pre Malone I just Pre Malone that. yeah um, okay. I would I would think uh, I would have gone with Kellogg's Malone. <laughs> Well, there's a Kellogg's Malone and a Post Malone. They're very similar. Same uh, number of know, scoops. Take either one. Yeah, they're fine. They like the raisin bran. Kind of at odds with each other. They yeah. don't really get along. So, all right, we're going to go through the answers now. Uh, so, the first known use of the term OMG for Oh My God, oh my God was in, it was either 1917, 1969, 1982, or 1998. The I hate all of this. Okay, go ahead. The correct answer is 1917. Of course it was. Of course it is. Of course oh. it is. It was, and yet you knew this, and so... <laughs> it was uh, in a telegram or, to Winston yeah, Churchill. Yeah. A telegram or a letter, yeah, to Winston Churchill. What? Um, a telegram and then he wrote back, LOL, and uh, then... He went, Lawful copter, and oh, goodness. Yeah, it was all in there. So wait a second, what was Winston Churchill doing in World War One? Uh, oh, He's a minister of something. Yeah, now. he did some bad. Like he was behind like the whole Gallipoli thing. It did. Um, yeah. huh. There's a brief window where people like Winston Churchill, mm -hmm. and like the second the war's over, get him out of here. Get <laughs> yeah. the bum out. Uh, and he love the bulldog. Keep the bulldog for ads. But that guy, get him out of here. Him well, I was here. just watching. Uh, I was watching Peaky Blinders, and he even shows up in Peaky Blinders. Really? He must have been, yeah. I guess, young Winston Churchill. 
Yes, Young Mr. Children. And he's in The Crown as well. I should just go watch The Crown, see what he's doing in World War One. He's also in Doctor Who. Yeah, that's right. He was um, when all time was happening at once. Oh. There was that going on uh, in yeah. one episode. Um, okay, so our second one. Uh, which of these is not the name of a Transformers? Well, did they, either of us win that one then? Did no, we there one? were no, okay. no, because we got 82. No winner, so we're yeah. tied. Tied now. Tied. Um, second question. Uh, which of these was not the name of a 1987 Transformers toy? It was uh, Blowpipe, Headshaft, Nightstick, or Wide Load? Mm -hmm. Headshaft was yes! the not Transformer. Yes! It made no sense. You were right. Good, good call. Uh, and, yeah, Blowpipe, Nightstick, and Wide Load were all released the same year. Now, was Wide Load like a bunch of fat jokes and it was like like a big, I, uh, you know, cement mixer or something? And he might, a lot I think of he was like, in the trunk. I think he's a trucker, yeah, like a, something with a big trailer on it. Um, but not, not, I guess not like a semi because that would be Optimus Prime. Um, who was the other? Ultra Magnus was the other semi truck. Ultra Magnus was, uh, yeah, that's right. Voiced by Robert Stack in the Transformers movie. <laughs> And why? It's an unsolved mystery. We don't know why. <laughs> I want to be the person who went and approached us uh, with Orson Welles and just went, okay, all right, hear us out. <laughs> You're a giant planet that eats other planets. There, there's a great quote in his last And your name is Wide Load. <laughs> like, I'm not going to do it if it's Wide Load. I think, How about Unicron? Yeah, I, I'm in. Yeah, I thought I was playing a unicorn. I don't understand this. I just... I just want to fund my damn movie. It's been, it's not Are finished. Are they virgin planets? Can I touch the, the virgin planets? <laughs> um, there is a, there's a, one of the last interviews with Orson Welles actually has him talking about, he's like, I'm, I'm playing a giant robot planet that eats planets. I don't understand. It's for some toy. <laughs> and that, yeah, it's great. Um, yeah. And then if you ever like would explain to him and what you'll be best known for later is pinky in the brain. Yes. What, 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 what do you mean? <laughs> You're two mice, and you're trying to take over the world. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah, they just take your boys. Yeah. Do I, does my estate get anything from that? Not a dad. <laughs> Enjoy. <laughs> oh, God. Rosebud. <laughs> <laughs> I was watching an episode of The Critic uh, the other day, and uh, Maurice LaMarche shows up doing his Orson Welles on there during um, someone's video will. And yeah. it, and it's just like, oh, here's a video oh. well hosted by Orson Welles. And it's just like, this is brought to you by Mrs. Pell's Fish Sticks. Uh, was, <laughs> the oh. weirdest version, of the weirdest appearance of that voice is in, uh, uh, what's the Tim Burton movie? Oh, Ed Wood. With Johnny Depp. That doesn't help at all. The and Tim Burton movie with Johnny Depp. I know what you're talking about. You know about. the you're, Bell of the Bottom Carter. You know what I'm talking about. The one in black and white. You know the one I'm talking about. Ed um, Wood. You're talking about Ed Wood. Yeah, where they have uh, the actor playing uh, Orson Welles, and then they dub over Maurice yeah. Lawrence's voice. Yeah, so it's, it's, it's just like, well, you're just doing the brain. Yeah. And it's it's Vincent uh, D'Onofrio playing yes. Orson Welles. So it's a recognizable so person. And then all of a sudden, you just want him to say, like, the same thing we do every night, Edward. Uh, <laughs> Dress in ladies' clothes. <laughs> it was Try to make the film. Oh, there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of people talking about or, uh, the frozen peas in the chat now, uh, folks. One of the fun things to do during laser chat is just open a thousand tabs on your browser, um, yeah. look up the Orson Welles frozen peas outtakes, and there. then look up the John Candy version because the John Candy oh. version is oh so and, sweet. yes oh when he does a magic trick on the Billy Crystal show, he comes out there's oh. a there's a bit. On there, where where he comes out as Orson Welles to do a magic trick on a Billy Crystal talk show. It's on YouTube. It's so good. Oh yes, yes, okay, yeah. Um, there is also um, oh, what was I going to say? It was some, some something Orson Welles related. <laughs> oh, oh, so there is a Pinky in the Brain episode called "Yes Always," and it is a word for word recreation of the Orson Welles frozen peas outtakes. Ah, very good. With wow. the exception for one naughty bit that they change, um, there are, yeah, yeah, there are two. There are two things that voiceover actors will do for forever. One is the Orson Welles piece, and the other one is uh, William Shatner uh, mispronouncing sabotage. Sabotage. Yeah. You say sabotage. I say sabotage. Don't correct me. It sickens me. Yes. Yes. It sickens, yeah. And the other is the. We know a remote farm in Lincolnshire where Mrs. Buckley lives. Every July, peas grow. Do you really mean that? Anyway, I can do the whole thing off by heart, but I won't. Because we have question three. According to the song, Don't Stop Me Now, what temperature do you reach when yeah. traveling 
at the speed of light. Closest. I would like to correct myself and say I would I would now if I was given a second chance say ten thousand degrees. Okay. That would be what I would say. Okay. okay what, what what would you say? But I I I hold that I locked in a thousand. Okay. Well, I will read you the lyrics. Okay. Okay. I'm burning through the sky. Yeah. 200 degrees. Oh, fuck. That's why they call me Mr. Fahrenheit. Oh, God, I'm traveling at the speed of light. Brian May, you have a PhD. You should be ashamed of yourself. You can't even boil water at 200 degrees Fahrenheit, let alone travel at the speed of light. So, Joanna, you get the point because you were you were only 300 degrees off. Oh, oh so it's, it's not uh, it's not Price's Right rules. So I didn't uh, go over. No, it's not Price's Right rules. It's just whoever's okay. the closest, uh, awesome. which means. Um, you slaughtered me. You slaughtered At, me. I At won! You, Joanna Gaskell, you are now president yes. of the internet. What is your first decree as president of the internet? Um, well, I would say that from this point forward, mm -hmm. anywhere on the internet, um, people must allow other people to like things. That is my decree. That is the decree, folks. Enjoy what you like. Like what you like. Gatekeepers, fuck off. Get out of here. That's Get it. Out. St. Peter, we don't need you no more. That yeah. that was like my, my 2021 promise was to help kill, I don't say kill fandom, but kill the gatekeepers. Um, metaphorically speaking, of course. Um, but yeah, just... Yeah, we can't say that anymore. It's a yeah. bad week for that. Yeah. yeah. Um, Storm the castle! Get rid of the... Oh, yeah. No, just... The gate gatekeepers, mute them. The mute button on your various social medias. Yeah. I highly encourage it. Um, so you can actually curate your social media of your choice uh, to do... Uh, to just, you know, just see stuff that you want to see that's interesting and stuff. Speaking of uh, curating your social media, uh, here's all the information you need to follow uh, Joanna Gaskell and oh. Ian Boothby on your very social medias. Twitter.com slash Mighty Joanna. Instagram.com slash Mighty Joanna. And mm -hmm. I believe you've also got a TikTok as well, Joanna? I do. It's also called Mighty Joanna. I've Look, got my... I've, I've cornered Mighty the Mighty Joanna market. You've cornered the Mighty Joanna market. I... Yeah. I guess I was late to the late to the game on TikTok, so I'm Eric Fell one. Uh, yeah, I saw that. You're Eric Fell and everything except TikTok. Except TikTok. Um, you know what? Because I think I started the Eric Fell one, and I just can't access it now. And it's private. Yeah, probably. So, yeah. yeah. And of course, for Ian Boothby, you've got Twitter.com slash Ian Boothby, Instagram.com slash Ian Boothby, and Instagram.com slash Mannequin on the Moon. Which oh. I do with Pia Guerra. And, yeah. and tell us about that. Oh, uh, it's uh, cartoons that uh, funny cartoons. I do with my wife Pia Guerra, who people might know uh, from uh, uh, her editorial cartoons, which is so amazing uh, right now that she does for the Nib and Washington Post. And she's also uh, the co-creator of Why the Last Man, the comic book, uh, soon to be a television series yes. as well. And I'm married to her, uh, so we do uh, cartoons for the New Yorker, and we're doing these cartoons, and we will soon have that as a co proper comic strip. Oh my That's gosh. all I can tell you. I don't say where, but that uh, is we're amazing. That Congratulations! Yeah. Uh, That's fantastic. Very cool. Um, but of course, myself, you, you can find me uh, right here, twitch.tv slash Eric Fell, twitter.com slash Eric Fell, instagram.com slash Eric Fell, anywhere where there's an Eric Fell, except for TikTok, it's Eric Fell one, and I've got two whole videos, and I'm going to try to use it. I'm going to try to learn how to use it to make action figure sketches. Nice. Well, sketch nice. comedy with my action figures. Um, uh, folks, uh, thank you so much to Ian Boothby and Joanna Gaskell for joining us. Um, normally we do laser chat every two weeks, but we've got another laser, laser chat coming up next week because we normally do wow. it every two it's weeks. traveling at the speed of light. I know, it's, it's 200 it's degrees. <laughs> um, I haven't finalized any guests yet, but uh, you'll be the first to know. Give us a follow here at Eric Fell, uh, uh, twitch.tv slash Eric Fell. Uh, and uh, every Monday I do miniature painting. Every other Wednesday is usually uh, a critical hit show related adventure with these two. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. And uh, I also uh, do a show with Joanna called What the Quest. We're coming back on the 16th. Uh, Whatever like next that. Tuesday the is. The Tuesday that's in there. Yeah, yeah. And but it's going to be The Expanse. We're playing The Expanse role playing game. That should be fun. Um, I will not learn Belter. Uh, I, I will not be able to do it justice. Um, I will somehow actually offend people 
my belter yeah. accent will be bad and people go hold on um, yeah what are you doing there i think that would happen to me as well i'm not gonna try <laughs> yeah 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 uh yeah I'll, I'll i'll be i'll have the same belter accent as fred johnson because uh, <laughs> <laughs> expanse jokes uh which i'm actually gonna go watch the the show now before bed uh, but yeah, follow us on our various social medias. Thank you once again for joining us. Uh, I love doing laser chat. I hope you'll all come again. Uh, I hope the two of you will come back. Thank you, Eric. That was really fun. Really, really mm-hmm. fun. Well, thank Agreed. you. Agreed. Yeah. All right. Well, you, everyone have a good night. Make good choices. I need some waving. Thanks, everyone, for, for, for joining in. And we <laughs> will see you all very soon. Bye. 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 Watch your hands disappear while we do this. Uh, 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 technology. It's not great yet.